me from the first day of my wet lip training, I took it like fish to water. I had spent long hours, much beyond the working hours, trying to learn the technicalities of the microscope and the ergonomics of the instruments which I was handling with and giving my best to master the initial steps of stereoscopic vision, hand-eye coordination, MP dexterosity, without which I would never qualify to become an eye surgeon. Now, as first-year residents, and all of us have done the same thing, we all have visited the butcher shop to procure goat's eye in order to practice every morning, even before the hospital started. And I had spent equally long hours in the wet lab operating on this goat's eye, trying to master an incision or suture on the goat's eye, or a tomato, or a potato, or a sponge, and so forth, for that matter, with those impossible 10 O monofilament nylon sutures. And this took hours and hours of training, only to realize that the physical skills could be achieved and developed only through repetition. But then what I eventually found out was that the practicing in a goat's eye and operating on a human eye are essentially two different things, and that there is no starting over from the beginning in a real human being. So after months of intensive wet lip training, I was given the green signal to proceed my footstep towards the OT. And I prepared myself by learning the simple rules and ethics that governed a complex working environment. But what I noticed after reaching the OT, that I was not given a case instantly. I was expected to start first by observing the cases, then practice to be an expert in assisting that surgery, when sometimes my consultant would feel benevolent to teach me and ask me to perform some easy steps of the surgery, like creating a side port or injecting a dye or a peritomy. And believe me, at that moment, I felt like I was slowing everyone else from finishing early, but no one complained. So finally, one the day came when my first surgery was allotted under direct supervision. I was nervous, I was scared, but then I was assured that I had great help. The first post-op was definitely a perfect one with the patient having gained almost perfect vision, but then I would have that undesirable feeling of being a surgeon as my consultant had to step in during the complicated parts of the surgery. So, the journey from wet lip to the OR till your first case is always a long and a mandatory one. Because once I went retrospectively and thought about the process, it took me around five to six months to get a whole full cataract case. So in order to have a full confidence in the surgery, we have to wait quite a long period of time. We, have to, we need to have patience. So putting in brief, the journey from wet lip to OR till your first case is a long and a meandering one. Now my first case, once I was qualified as a surgeon, I was again nervous, I was again scared, but assured once again, and that assurance came from the knowledge and experience I had gained through years of training. So wet lip plays a major role in enhancing the confidence and surgical skills of the resident, which is ultimately manifested in reduced rate of complications. Dr. Henderson has mentioned in his article that wet lip training are one way to offer thorough balanced training. Practicing in a wet lip can be an effective and efficient tool for becoming a competent surgeon. Now, wet lip training in ophthalmic residency program has also been recognized and mandated by the Accreditation Council of Graduate Medical Education in 2005. Dr. Pradeep et al. have also shown in his studies that students, residents who have spent time in wet lab had lesser rate of complications and improved visual outcomes after cataract surgery. Now, wet lab is always an integral part of a teaching institute. The need for assessment of surgical training competency and the requirement of wet lab training facilities were emphasized more so during the COVID-19 pandemic as the number of free surgeries and the shutdown of camp had led to the reduction of surgical training of the residents. Now my journey from wet lip to the OR got reversed when I joined as a consultant in Sri Shankar Deva Netralek Guwahati in the Department of Community and Comprehensive Ophthalmology. There again, I traveled through the same journey with the residents, though in a reverse role. Besides giving the tips and tricks of the surgery, I always persuaded them that how much peregrinated they would feel in this journey. It is always rewarding at the end. Discipline and consistency are the two most important things required during the wet lab training. 
practice is what makes one so good that surgery can happen almost unconsciously without the mind acknowledging each step, that learning surgery is a constant endeavor, that every case is different, that every case will, can be a better one than the previous. And last but not the least, always to focus on quality, as the mere number of surgeries is never an indicator of a true surgeon's skill. Thank you so much for patience hearing. Thank you, Dr. Supriya, that was a wonderful presentation.